what are we going to do? We're going to create an omni-channel campaign. We are going to use content management to do storytelling and to create inspirational assets. We're going to localize it and we're going to translate it. So it's a global rollout that we're planning here. And there are a lot of assets that we are working with. Yeah, and we show you how these assets can intelligently work together if you use the right metadata to really make them accessible. And last but not least, we want to convert, we want to sell our products. We show you how the whole experience ties into the existing e-commerce landscape. So that's what we do. These are our three fantastic brand ambassadors. We choose fashion because there are various aspects that we think match very well. It's high velocity. There are always new and fresh styles. Yeah, it's a seasonal way of selling products. There are different looks and the products relate to that look. Yeah? So there is a correlation between products that work together in a certain way that they create a cool style, what we call a look. And on the other hand, there are lots of aspects and details to the products that we can use to highlight textures and stuff like that to really show what fantastic products we have to offer. In the end, there are assets, assets, assets. Yeah, we did two days of photo shooting. We shoot more than 50 products. We had six of these looks. We had 500 photos, 200 gigabyte of video content. And that's all at your fingertips right now, Oli, because you have it in your Comedia content cloud. Exactly. With the right tooling, we can tame that complexity. And that's what I'm going to show you in a live software. First of all, where do we start? All the campaign assets are usually in a Dropbox after the photo shooting. And the first question is, how do I bring the content in my Comedia content cloud? And we see this here. This is a live tool now, the Comedia Studio. How do we bring it in there? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We can launch our library. And here we see we not only have access, of course, to the content already residing in the Comedia CMS, we also have access to external systems, Instagram, YouTube, Dropbox, you name it. In our case, let's take a look into the Dropbox here and dive into it. Then what we see is that all our campaign assets are here in the Dropbox. And then I can choose just one of them. We can preview it here in our Content Hub. And first thing, before we come to the metadata, is I want to ingest this picture manually. So sure. I do this by right-clicking on it, say create new content item, confirm the name, and that's all I need to do. Cool. So that single asset, the image, is now opening in Core Media Studio. And something you will notice is, wow, this looks like very raw. There has not been done much Photoshop to it. And not even the orientation is clear. Is that landscape or is it portrait? And to be fair, it's both, actually. And that's why we have not Photoshopped it, because that's something that Oli is now doing in the Core Media Studio. We cut off the white space. We set the focus point. We activate all the screens around here, which show us the omni-channel preview as we work on the asset. So Oli can fine tune different aspect ratios. And this is something rich in terms of high velocity marketing where Comedia helps you a lot to speed up your content creation process. And we're now going to show you how that works with a bunch of assets that you're uploading. So there are numerous products that we have that are related to this style. And we want to upload the whole bunch of assets that we have. And exactly. Oli is opening the folder here. So I'm going back into my Dropbox and then open the folder here. And when I scroll down, I can choose, I don't know, any particular product, an arbitrary pod product, maybe this jacket here. And you notice all the metadata here. And that's what we're using when we do a bulk import. And first of all, let me start this campaign bulk import. So while that is uploading, you see we've already put the focus point into the metadata. So the manual setting the focus point, getting the cropping right, will be automated right now. We also know the jacket actually belongs to the look that Janina is wearing here. So that's the jacket detail, but we tie it to the whole look. And last but not least, we've got the product ID, which gives us the reference of that image to the product catalog. So we'll not just upload the images, but we'll also have a direct link, like a product teaser that ties our assets to the product in the sales catalog of the commerce systems that lies underneath. Exactly. And that's what, uh, again, we used during our import. So in, if we take a look at the result and show the results of the import, now everything is part of the Comedia Content Cloud already. Then I can drill into the look number six, maybe. Here I can drill into the jacket, which we've just uploaded as part of the campaign import. And then we see all the different pictures in here, but we see more, and that's wow. very important. Yeah, and we also here. see Pause the here. product just, teaser. Just, just for one second, yeah? 
This is the teaser that ties into the product catalog. The rest are just the corresponding images that, that show me more details to that specific item, in this case, the jacket. Exactly so. So when I open this product teaser, we see the experience already that became alive. So we see we have a shop now button, we have the price from the product catalog, we have the product name, the product description, all of that we pull in at real time, at runtime, and that's the important thing. It's no copy of paste and paste of any data. It's a dynamic integration, so we only have the product SKU, and we pull everything from the e-commerce system that we need to render this particular banner. Cool, so now we want to make our look image shoppable, and the first step to do that, uh, again, this is the manual one, we'll show the automated later, is to create an image map. Correct. So we Very start straightforward and simple. Exactly. We start on the image we've imported manually. So then we say with one action we create an image map. So we make this picture actually shoppable, and we can do so by going to our hot zone editor. And there can simply mark the areas, the clickable areas for the white jacket, for the um, yellow top, for example, here as well. So that was super simple. Cool. And we now see that we are missing the products. Now, good question is, how do I find the products in my e-commerce system? Yeah? Do I need to change the tooling for that? Of course not. That no. It wouldn't be Comedia Content Cloud if that was uh, necessary. So everything that I need here to create the experience is here available in Comedia Studio. So I have my little light bulb on top here, my little assistant. And that shows me all the product teasers that are, or the products actually, that are part of that look. And that's very interesting. That's only built on top of the metadata information we have already. We could also plug in some AI if that makes any sense. But in this case, only the metadata is necessary he here, so I can pull in exactly the product products that have been photo sh that have been photoshooted here. So pull in the yellow top first, and then where's my white jacket? Here it is. Pull in this one, and then we see on the right hand side as the preview reloads how the experience looks like. Yeah, I have these. Hot zones here where I can click, so I can explore the white jacket further or the yellow top. I can add it to the cart. I can go to the product detail page. So the whole experience is rendered here. And you also notice on the top there, there's an animation of the same piece of content, the same image map. It's rendered as an animation. So depending on the uh, device capabilities, we can have a different experience on different channels. Cool. So. This is cool. It works for two products, yeah. But obviously, there are a lot more products that are related to that look, yeah, to the Janina look. And we want to now create a look page which actually features all of the products, and it's as easy as that. Yeah. Exactly. There's one action to create the look. The next best action is always one click away. So here's my look page that I've created. Well, currently we only have added the image, of course. Um, but there's more, so maybe we want to be more inspirational and take a look at what videos are there that fit to my look. And here are two, and maybe I simply um, drag and drop one into that list here. So then we see how the experience changes. Now we've infused the video into that. But we wanted to highlight the products so that people can click on, say, the, uh, the, um, the handbag or the pants or whatever. So we go back to our product teaser list, and by simply copy and pasting um, not copy pasting, but copying, selecting the products, and then dragging or dropping. That's what I wanted to say. Referencing the products. Exactly. That's important we see to that understand. all the products yeah. of the look are rendered here below. So the earrings, the white shoes, the white bag, everything is there. Everything has a price, as we have the link into the e-commerce systems. So it's nothing that I, as a business, have to do manually. That's what we can do automatically, and that that's what enables high-velocity marketing. Exactly. And we're now going to show how that actually works in a more automated fashion. We remember that when we uploaded the jacket, there was the product teaser that we created, but there were a bunch of detailed images to the jacket. And if we now click on the image, we'll get to the PDP, and the ugly stepchild, stepchild of e-commerce suddenly turns into a much more inspiring experience because we got all the relevant details that highlight, highlight the jacket. And something else is happening. Yeah? We know the jacket is part of Janina's look up here, but we are also featuring the jacket down here as part of Kara's look. Yeah? And it's as easy as that, and now you'll see it in the fully automated way. We can now dive into Kara's look. Ollie is opening it. We get a new look page, which now features all the products that are part of Kara's look. And I get inspired and I see new things that suddenly caught my interest. And wow, I like these sneakers. And you by now know what's happening, yeah? So I'm diving into the details of the sneakers. Again, 
There's some inspirational content here, fantastic footage that we have, a lot more details that show the sneakers, and again, there are various styles that feature the sneaker, and I see, well, there is a more casual style with the denim jacket here, and, well, by now I guess you got the concept. I dive into the denim style, well, and this is how I get into a sort of endless shopping experience. Yeah? I'm constantly serving fresh content, I'm gathering data about my customer, what are the products he's interested in, what are the hooks yeah, where he's jumping onto the train to really get some new inspiration, and that's all the things that I can use to inspire and to convert. Yeah? It's as easy as that. That's all done with our integrated digital asset management and the very flexible but extremely powerful metadata model. That's the same way how we would integrate with any AI system, automated product suggestions and the like. Exactly, you can yeah. plug them all in and it's all available here directly in Comedia Studio. Cool, so we got another important thing and we heard it in one of the previous speeches, like the thing that converts the most is video. Yeah? For Correct. that reason, we, when we took did our little campaign ourselves. We did everything that we did in photo, we also did in video. And we want to show you a little shoppable video that we've now created and how easy it is to assign products to it and align products to the actual video. Correct, so we see this example here already. I pulled it up from my bookmarks. So there's a shoppable video, a video that I can consume. And while I'm watching it, you see there's a timeline below or next to the video, depending on the space we have available on the, on the different screens and, and different channels. So and when I watch this and I l when I like a product, I can easily yeah, open that product. So say I like, I don't know, this red jacket or the red um, the, the handbag, whatever I do like, I can explore it immediately, I can shop it here, I can open it. And that is a very important thing and it's not set in stone, very importantly. So we can prove that. When we take a look into the product assignments, we see that there is a timeline defined. It's all, of course, automatically initially generated due to the metadata we have. But we can obvi obviously also amend that timeline. So say I want to feature, as part of Kara's look here, the, um, the yellow scarf that we see in a second. Yeah, here we go. It's not part of the timeline yet. If I want to do so, let's use our little light bulb assistant here. There we have the yellow scarf and I can easily drag and drop it into the timeline here. Say this should be featured after 14 seconds. That's all I need to do. I can close my assistant. What we do now in the background is of course regenerating the image, uh, the video, I'm sorry, for all the different channels. So that takes two, three seconds. And then we will see the whole video will reappear here and then we will see the yellow scarf being featured in the timeline as well. Here we go, now we've got the reload and there we go, there's the yellow scarf available. I can click on it, I can explore it further, go to the PDP, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's as cool as that, yeah? How easy is it to personalize the video now uh, to hide products that are not available? Because it's not glued together, yeah? we're dynamically putting these experiences together opens a lot of flexibility. So, in our storyline, we've got all the assets that we need. We've got the images, the product, the teasers, uh, the videos and everything. So, we now want to create a landing page for our campaign. Since exactly. Comedia is a content management system, it's one of the easy tasks. Let's show how simple that is. So, we can start a new, create a new page based on a template. First of all, we need to enter a name. That's casual summer looks. And then I select a template, so there's a bunch of predefined templates available. I create this landing, use this landing page layout, and that creates the page. So here we see we've got different areas, different slots or placements, we call it. There's a hero placement, placement one, placement two. And we already see the preview on the right-hand side of that empty page. Well, it is already part of the navigation, but otherwise it's, of course, empty. So now we will bring in content, and first of all, we will reuse our shoppable video so I simply drag and drop it in here in the hero banner and then we see the page will be reloaded while that's happening or there we go already we can also then of course use our little assistant here to see what content there is suggested maybe we want to infuse some looks into the experience simply take the first three looks maybe select them drag and drop them over and then we've added this in the next placement and finally at the bottom we will maybe want to add some product teasers here. Again, I simply mark them and set, uh, drag and drop them over. 
So then we see the previews, the experience more or less is completed. We can do a preview here. Well, here we go. Now we have everything in here, the shoppable video, the uh, looks, the three looks, and of course the product teasers. Fantastic. So as easy as that, you've put together a full-blown landing page. Yeah? Just one more thing, yeah? and that's something that we hear over and over again. Yeah? Well, with an existing environment, there's limited flexibility to design and layout and the like. Yeah? So how easy is it actually to adopt and change the look and feel of the content that we are displaying here, Oli? Very easy. So maybe we focus here on this placement one, where you see currently the three items are rendered as a square banner, as we call it. So that's it here. here in the middle, correct? Exactly, correct. Right. So when I take a look here, you see there's additional alternative layout modules available. Of course, these are only the predefined layouts module that ship with Comedia Content Cloud. You can adapt it, of course, to whatever you want to have. But to outline the concept, let's change it maybe from square banner to left-right banner. What happens then is we apply this layer to the same content and you will see the change here in the preview. Now the three items that have been next to each other and now below each other in a left-right um, automatic layout. Or if I do another change to say maybe I want to see how it all looks as a hero banner, then again we will take this into consideration. We will regenerate the page and then in a few seconds we will see the page being rendered. Here we go. So this is now all rendered in a banner-like carousel. I mean, this is a very powerful concept because, Oli, I do have these various view types, yeah, like little snippets yeah, within the whole page that all have or that can be applied to every placement, correct? So it's more like a correct. Lego type of brick concept. Correct. Yeah? And you can easily extend different it. colors and I can plug them together however I feel it's appropriate, yes? Exactly. You see, it's just a drag and drop action away. So very simple to change and amend. So and of course, it's all responsive and adaptive. Let's point this out. So oh, currently, you see this is the desktop mm -hmm. view. Yeah? And you see the little slider here on top. If I move that slider, we can see how would the experience look like on a tablet in landscape format? How does it look in portrait mode? And you see then, depending on the existing viewport, we have more or less products in the timeline, for example, that's all handled automatically by the Comedia Content Cloud. So, fantastic. We got our landing page. The next thing that we need to do is we need to do an outreach to our audience. Yeah? And uh, the best way to get out there is probably to go to Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, wherever. Exactly, to all yeah. the channels that we have, we want to reach out. That we have. So we need a little like teaser hero, something that exactly. drives traffic to our campaign. So let's start with something that looks very good, very shiny. So let's take a look at our asset management, what pictures we have. So first we dive into that, we see all the pictures that are there, but of course I can filter further, I can do a full text search or I search via tag. We've seen the metadata already. So I start typing summer and then we see all the different tags we have available. So these are all the ones for the summer campaign. And then maybe I choose something with a yeah, heaven background, I would say, maybe this one here. Let's open this quickly. And then we see, first of all, how it looks on all the different aspect ratios, on all the different devices we see it as attached here. So that actually looks pretty good. So what I want to do is, of course, I want to specify a link target. What happens if I click on the banner? I want to also position text. And that's why I create a teaser from that picture. Here we go. There's my teaser. And there, the first thing is that we can specify the teaser target. So I simply drag and drop my newly created landing page here, here we go, and say I want to add a call to action button, it's just a click away, I activate that, and well finally I want to put more text on the image and I also want to position it differently. So that's yeah. what I'm doing here, specify so a style. Yeah, you see that's all predefined here, that of course works correspondingly to my CI, but there's a lot of flexibility still, we can position the text so it matches uh, the arrangement of the image. Yeah, I would suggest in this case maybe move it down a little bit, Oli. Exactly. Okay. And you see the flexibility. There's no Photoshop needed. It's high velocity marketing. I want to do it all in Comedia Studio, and I can. So that's our banner now. Yeah, but that's only the web version of it. Yeah, we do see like in the pr uh, fragmented preview here how the banner actually renders if we place it on different parts of the website but we now want to do a social outreach. So how does it look on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and the like? Yeah, in order to check that, I can simply switch our omnichannel preview to social outreach. 
So I change it here and then I immediately see how would my banner look like on Twitter, how would it look like on Instagram, on Facebook, on all the different channels that you can imagine. Could also have like a Google Ads campaign, how would it look like there. So all these options are available. And when I'm happy there, I can yeah, push it out to the social networks immediately or via some external tooling or I push it into the marketing cloud, whatever I want to do next. Exactly. So, fantastic. One We're step done is with our one campaign. One step is missing. That, Sorry. Oh, one step. One Before step. We That's go the headless thing. The headless Absolutely. thing. Everyone is yeah. talking about headless. Of course, it's all headless. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we also support that. Yeah, and we can see it here just to show it to you or to the more technically minded people maybe interested in technology. So whenever there's an app, a mobile app, for example, consuming content or some specific channel, we have the JSON view, the technical view on that piece of content, of course, is very well available. I, I love the JSON view, Oli. Actually, I like yeah, it as I well. Yeah, the it more it I see it's it. It's like you have to see the metrics, yeah? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's all there, all the different channels, all the different technology, they all come with Comedia Comet Cloud. So cool. And now, when we're done, like we've got all our assets, we got all our products, we got the integration to the e-commerce system, we got our shoppable images, our shoppable videos and everything, and we got our campaign and our landing page, like the atomic thing happens. Yeah. I mean, our campaign is actually successful. Yeah. So people see what we do, they see it on all their various channels, and they come to our website and they get inspired, and they shop like animals, and they even go to our stores. Yeah? And that's a funny moment in time. Yeah, because suddenly the experience is very different. Yeah? They get into the store and they say, wow, I saw this fantastic casual summer campaign that you were promoting. Can I please have a look at the handbag that you were promoting? And the first question is, what handbag? Yeah, yeah but I saw it. You had this fantastic video. Yeah? Where? Oh, yeah, on our website. No, I have no clue. Yeah? So that's really something that we see over and over again. There's an increasing amount of digital real estate in the physical stores. There are screens and it's becoming more and more an immersive digital experience, but it's not linked to what we do online. Yeah? These are two still separate worlds. Yeah? Content delivery often works on a USB stick. Yeah? So the best that you will see is last, last week's USB stick, yeah? because the other ones are just lost and people don't find them. So how can I synchronize my digital campaign content with my in-store experience? And it's as easy as that. Just schedule it. Use Core Media Content Cloud to drive your campaign asset right into the physical store. Use the digital real estate that you have there. And we have the Elegant Summer Look now available because it's scheduled for this week. Exactly, that's the active campaign. But and last we week we had the Denim Summer Look, yeah? Exactly, we see the last week's campaign and the good thing is we can even preview how the store experience in this case looks like in the past and the future. So uh, for who example, who if I say- that this is a fake? Ah, come on. So yeah? we prove <laughs> it, it's not a fake, yeah? <laughs> we can use our time travel, we can choose any data, uh, date, in the future or in the past. So say, how would, I, would this experience look like last week? So we simply set the date. And then we see it's, of course, the campaign from last week. It's the denim look that we saw here. So we can preview that. We can test it. We can roll it out. It's all in there in the content cloud. So and that's just one use case that we think where Comedia Content Cloud really helps you to bridge the gap between the digital and the physical store. Yeah? The other thing is, why not use everything that I have in my online channels to do real client telling? Yeah? So if I come into the store and I, for example, see all the great things here on the wall, maybe I'm interested in the white handbag. Yeah? And it would be as easy as that. Take one of these regular scanning devices, have your product code onto the handbag, look down here, I'm scanning it, peep, and there we have the handbag. Uh, we pull it onto our main screen and suddenly all the details that we have that relate to the handbag will be populated on our screens. And I do notice, well, there is, first of all, a second version of the handbag. It actually has a belt that goes around your wrist and it looks very nice with the red look uh, that Kara is wearing. So I got another little tag which now features the full look of Kara and I'm scanning it down here, the red casual look number, uh, number one pops up. We're putting it onto the screen. And now we are immersing ourselves in a totally new experience. I could say maybe the white jacket is also something that I like. 
I peep on it, I find the white jacket, and that's how I continue to serve and to reuse all my digital content in a one-to-one -one interaction in my in-store experience. And this is great for two reasons. I mean, first of all, it's cool because we've got all these fantastic footage and all the assets that we can use to inspire our customer. But secondly, we are having a track of things that we know that the customer was interested in. And we can use this data. We can suddenly get intelligent information about what are people actually looking at when they go into our stores. We could do A-B testing in store in a physical world right now. Yeah? And we can also use this data to do a very personalized follow-up. Yeah? So Oli is just taking it, copying in it, and we are creating a personalized newsletter. So once the customer has left the store, we have a one-to-one -one way following up. So we are copying in it into the newsletter template. These are all the products that we thought were of interest to our customer. And we can then push it to our marketing cloud or just directly follow up with a personalized newsletter. I mean, it's fantastic as that, yeah? And it wouldn't be great if there wasn't just one more last thing, and then exactly. I mean, you, have really, you have had so much patience with us. Thank you, uh, thank you for that. I mean, obviously, everything that we have in our digital environment is multi-language, yeah? So even though this might be our Cologne flagship store, if I'm from Japan, we could still start to serve content in my mother language, yeah? Which in that case is Japanese, so Oli, has pulled up the teaser for the red jacket, and you will see on all our screens, we've changed the currency, which is yen now, and we are also communicating in a different language. Yeah? And that's how easy it is to really make use of everything that we built in the last 10 minutes. We hope that you enjoyed it.